Today, our series on distinguished persons of Indian descent brings to you a most unusual millionaire. Amar Gopal Bose, or Bose as it's pronounced in America, heads one of the world's biggest high-tech audio equipment manufacturers. Forbes magazine lists him among the top 400 wealthiest Americans with a net worth of $500 million. Yet this modest and dignified man has remained for almost four decades a professor of electrical engineering at MIT. At Bose Corporation, he draws a salary like the rest of his employees and prefers to live simply without any of the trappings of wealth. He puts all his profits back into the company to fund its research. Not too far in spirit from the Gandhian approach. And it's not surprising that the bright young engineers who make up his workforce treat him with a kind of reverence. Professor Bose acknowledges that his personality and values were formed to a great extent by Indian influences, even though he was born and brought up in America. He worshipped his father, who was a patriot and freedom fighter from Jessore in what was then East Bengal. But that's another story. And his parents met each other through a Swami who was teaching them Vedanta. He doesn't see himself as belonging to any particular religious creed, but there is a spiritual core to his corporate philosophy. The professor meets us at his company headquarters on the mountain near Boston to talk about his life as a scientist and inventor. Well, I believe that everything that a human being does at any point in his life is the result of an integration of all his experiences in growing up. And uh, in my particular case, uh, I believe a lot of what I do is, was influenced by those very formative years. Uh, I had a great respect for my parents and, uh, and I think I absorbed some of their values. I may behave, uh, uh, as you say, in America like an American, but the thinking pattern, the way you look at things, the, the, uh, the motivations that you have are, in my case, heavily influenced by my upbringing. I was born in Philadelphia in 1929. And that was a very special year because uh, that was the huge stock market crash. And uh, I was in the hospital being born when that took place. And uh, so I am told my parents had to borrow $75 to get me out of the hospital because whatever earnings my uh, parents had accumulated <coughs> were held in stocks. <laughs> and they all disappeared overnight. I was raised uh, under a very strong Indian environment. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, our home was one in which all the revolutionaries uh, fighting for freedom of India would stay. At least up until my 10th or 12th year, I probably knew more about India than I did about uh, America. My mother and father both met uh, because they were involved in classes uh, studying Vedanta, so that the philosophical side was something that uh, I grew up with and, and uh, uh, <coughs> heard lectures every single uh, week uh, um, in very formative years by a Swami who was then in Philadelphia. Uh, I even grew up on Indian food because my mother was a good cook, but my father was a better one. <laughs> and uh, uh, I uh, have two children who have been many times to India since their mother is Indian. And uh, uh, they are primarily American in their viewpoints uh, because most of their experience has been here and um, their upbringing on the Indian side was not as strong as mine was. 
I'm not a member of any religion as such. You don't become a um, in India, that's not even an issue. You don't become a Hindu or anything else. Uh, but uh, yes, it does have a definite uh, impact on the things that I do. I, I don't meditate long periods of time or anything, but a short period of time every day, yes. Um, get the mind calm. If you Creativity never comes under emotional stress or tension. Uh, the real creativity comes when the mind finally relaxes uh, and is, is quiet and then can focus. When I was old enough to remember, when anybody would ask me, as they sometimes ask children, what are you going to be when you grow up? Uh, uh, my, my father would quickly answer that, oh, when he grows up, he's going to MIT. Well, it turned out that I had great interest in, the, in things electrical, from electrical trains uh, on. Uh, we didn't have enough money to buy uh, new trains, and so I, uh, I would cut lawns and things and, and earn the money and, and then buy ones uh, that were turned in uh, or scrap ones, and then I would fix them. 